Thanks for tuning in to The Melanin. I'm Brittany. And I'm Stacy, And this is Crime and Cocktails. Today we're going to be telling you the story of Gregory Green. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for Crime and Cocktails. Today's drink is called Murder Murder because it's not about one murder. It's about two. And there's not one shot in here. There's two. So in today's cocktail, there is peach calypso southern lemonade with a little bit of crown peach and a lot of peach rings. It's really yummy and it definitely will sneak up on you just like the dude in this story we're about to tell. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers. All right, you guys, so let's get into it. Mr. Gregory Green, the man that killed his family twice. So I'm gonna take you guys back to 1989 when he meets his first wife, Tanya. Now this, is, this man is light skin, green eyes, and I'm sorry, but at one point, light skins was in style. It's still in for me. Light skins are still in for <laughs> me. So me. light skin, green eyes meets Tanya, um, Tanya Clayton. She falls in love with him. He woos her. They meet at church. I mean, everyone thinks this is the best place you can meet a man at church. Um, so they get married, 1989, and they're having a good old time going to church loving each other after a while out of nowhere tanya starts talking to her friends and is like this man has changed he is not the same he's never happy i can't do nothing to please him he's always angry i don't know what's gotten into him but i don't want to be married to him anymore so she kind of starts plotting a way to get out fast forward to 1991 things still aren't good and she actually talks to one of her friends and was like, you know what, girl, I think after church, I'm going to make my move. She had two kids from a prior relationship. She was like, after church, we're going to pack our stuff and leave. So her friend's like, all right, girl, you know, holler at me later. Her friend never spoke to her again. Tanya, I guess, went home after church, like she said, and she must have told him that she was going to leave him. Gregory Green stabs his wife 10 times, kills her. Now, a really horrific thing is she was actually six months pregnant with their child. So he kills her and their unborn child. What's even wilder is he calls 911 on himself. Now, her other two kids hid in the closet. He did not get to them. They hid and they stayed very, very quietly in the back of a closet in another room. He waited till 911 got there, turned himself in, told them where the knife was. He had took a steak knife and stabbed her. Thank God the other kids lived. Um, Gregory Green ends up going to trial. Like I said, he admits to it, pleads guilty. He gets 15 to 25 years. During that time, he goes up to up for parole about four times. He gets denied every single time because they're like, you're not showing any empathy. He didn't show no remorse. He looked like he didn't care that the wife and his unborn child were dead. He was just going up for parole to see if he could get out and he kept getting denied. Until the fifth time, he gets the pastor from the church he used to go to to write him a character letter pastor writes a great letter says he sees change in him and the parole board sees change in him and gregory green is released in 2008 still light skin still green eyes Popping. goes out into the world fresh out of prison and goes back to the church and i'm gonna let stacy take over from here so i is. need a drink real quick <laughs> So in 2008, when he is fresh out and he is back in the streets, in church, at the same church he used to go to, so he sees some of the same faces, um, the pastor actually has a daughter, a daughter who was kind of crushing on Gregory, but she was a lot younger than him. 
So, you know, it wasn't really a right time for her to be trying to holler at him. But nevertheless, Pastor introduces them and uh, gets them together. And two years into, after he's released from prison, they get married. So Faith is the woman's name. Faith Harris Green, after she marries him. Um, so Faith already had two kids that she was bringing into the marriage um, that she had had. And she marries Gregory. And then she gets pregnant. She has a daughter. And then she starts to notice things, you know, are a little weird. He's starting to act a little strange. He has like this extreme high. He has extreme lows. He's probably, possibly, he's probably like bipolar. But, you know, black people like to ignore mental health and do nothing about it. So... She's just kind of like, mm, maybe it's just me. She keeps rolling with it, but then it just, it really doesn't change. So it gets to the point where it's like, mm, I don't know if I want to be in this uh, relationship. Um, I mean, there's little incidents here and there where she is afraid of him. So she tries to get a restraining order, but it doesn't work out for her because yeah, the cops are like, um, I guess she kind of just told the cops like, he's just threatening me. I want to leave. And the cops are like, mm, not really much to warrant a restraining order. So she doesn't leave them or she might try to leave for a little few days. And next thing you know, your girl's pregnant with the second baby. Now they got two kids all together four, and nothing gets better. It just continues the same thing. Like she's hoping, you know, what? she wants a family. She wants her two kids to have a family with this man but he he's really not changing he still has the same behavior she's still scared of him and come and come to find out her kids are not really a fan of this man like her daughter is always thinking that i think she wrote a diary but they didn't find this till later um about how her mom was different with this man like she was just like infatuated with him but she wasn't the same person when she was with him um, and she just didn't think he was a good person altogether. And she, her mother continues on this relationship with this man and it's, it's not good. She's still scared of him. She's still, you know, his, his, he doesn't change. He doesn't change. She leaves him for a bit, but then she comes back. Yeah. So I think she was pretty much just tranced again by the light, light skin, green eyes, now, again, the little girl's diary wasn't found until after all of this has happened. But she did say that the mom would be acting different. The mom seemed obsessed with him. And whatever he was doing, I don't know, I call it digmatized. Like, she just kept going back. She couldn't stay away. They'd have really good days. And then for, like, a week straight, he'd be angry. Nothing could please him. And nobody wants to live like that. So, um, also like one time the other two older kids went to go visit their dad. So it was just Greg, Faith, and their two kids that they had together. And they went to like a water park, had a good weekend and he had a good day and they're sitting there and everyone's having a good time. And he's like, don't you just wish it could be just us four? And Faith is like, what? And he's like, isn't this nice? Just the four of us. And she was like, it's nice, but my other two kids are a part of us. You married all of me. And it's I'm happy with all of my kids. It's supposed to be all six of us. So she thought that was a little weird. Again, she stays. And that brings us to September 21st of 2016. The awful, the murder. Murders. Because we said there was more than one, right? Well, that night, Gregory wakes up Faith out of her sleep, just wakes her up, makes her come into the living room. Um, her son is in the living room and he tells her son, hey, tie up your mom. And he's like, no, I'm not tying up my mom. But he's like, no, you better tie up your mom. He has a gun. Well, he ties up his mom because he's scared. And, you know, he doesn't want, you know, anything to happen. And she's kind of scared. He's kind of scared. So her son ties her up. And then Gregory ties up her son. And then um, the daughter, the older daughter comes in and they tie her up as well. He leads them into the basement and makes them lie down 
on their backs and they're zip tied mind you like they're kind of probably on their sides a little bit but he makes them lie down in the basement and he keeps like running up and down the stairs coming back and forth he has a gun and they just like they're trying to stay calm because they don't know what is going on they don't know what is happening and um the whole time faith is just kind of like well at least you know the little ones are asleep they're not you know going through this you know my older ones are here with me so the little ones are asleep but Brittany, what was going on with the little ones so the two little girls what he had done while in the middle of the night he had picked them up out of their bed and you know little kids fall asleep anywhere so he picked them up went to the garage and put them in the car he rigged the car to where the exhaust would go into the car you know where they're sitting where the kids are laying sleep and he let the carbon monoxide basically kill them and the reason he kept going up and down the stairs is because he kept peeking in on the two little girls seeing if they were still breathing or not he later on said that they never woke up they went straight to sleep they died comfortably peacefully they never knew what was coming to them so once they were gone, he goes back upstairs. So once they were gone and they're in the basement, he comes back down there and what does he do? He shoots her son. He shoots Faith's son while they're lying there on their sides, on their back, you know, he shoots her son. And then she can hear him kind of like struggle and then take a last breath and that was it. And he wasn't, he wasn't finished with this little reign of terror. He shoots her daughter as well. And same thing, she hears her struggle a little bit and then she dies as well. So then he knows she is this, you know, she is so scared at this point. She is like crying and he then shoots her in the foot. He doesn't kill her, he just shoots her in the foot and then he takes like a box cutter or something and slices up her face. And when he's done with that, his old crazy ass runs up the stairs and calls the police and tells them that he needs, you know, for the police to come because he just um, killed some people. The police come. He goes willingly. He admits to killing all four. Uh, the wife doesn't know at this time that all four of her kids are gone. She doesn't find out until she comes to in the hospital mm -hmm. And she's like, well, where's the two babies? And they tell her at that time, like, oh, they were dead in the garage. Yes. So he goes to interrogation and he just basically says, like, yep, I killed them. I don't know what came over me. But the reason I let her live is because if I have to live with this for the rest of my life, so does she. How sick is that? How sinister is that? Like, he completely premeditated that whole thing and th the sickening part is he this is the second time he's done this he's gotten away with the same crime and it's just like it, he has no remorse he is very like matter of fact I, yes I did the shit like he does not care he wanted her to suffer he knew that she couldn't have any more kids so he took every one of her kids away from her he wanted her to suffer and, and that she did she's gonna continue to suffer for her entire life for making a decision. So what I, you know, Brittany, what do you think? Because this guy has committed the same crime, the same Twice. crime. And what do you think? What do you think of that? So, I mean, now he did go to trial. Now this time they gave him more time. So he, this time around, I think he went to prison when he was like 45, 48, something mm -hmm. like that. And he's not going to get out or be eligible for, for parole until he's like 92. But in this case, I feel like the mother is partly to blame. I am. It might be too harsh or what have you. But she, to me, was weak. And it's easier said than done. I don't have any kids. But she kept going back to him. Like you hear a lot of women say. I don't want my kids to grow up in a single family household. I want them to have their mom and their dad. And she always held on to his good stuff. So she she kept going back. I call it digmatized because I feel like she could have maybe 
went on to find love somewhere else. Um, I hate that she kept putting her kids in the situation. I think somebody said that the daughter was kind of open about it, that she didn't really like him. She never liked his vibes. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wish the mom would have been a little bit stronger and actually stayed gone at least one of those several times she tried to leave. Unfortunately, this last time she went back was the last time for all her kids. She's still alive, but now she lives with that. Um, and I think it's even more disturbing that her father, her father, and I don't know how good the relationship is at this point to this day because he's the one responsible for introducing them, like for encouraging that marriage. He knew all the while what this man did. He, she never knew that he murdered his first wife. So I think I would like to think that that would have made a difference in her decision to marry this man, knowing what he was already capable of. People change, but I don't know if murderers do. So, <laughs> and I mean, you can go and say that a lot of things are crime of passions, but his shit was not a crime of passion. He's a straight up sociopath who was so calm, so calculating, not a tear shed in that interrogation room for his kids his flesh and blood he killed once and he killed again and he killed kids the most innocent people in this situation were those kids and they're the ones that had to die and their mom is living suffering now it's always like the kids that that suffer i mean mm -hmm. it sucks those kids i think her son was 19 mm -hmm. uh the daughter i want to say was 14 and I think the two younger ones were like six and four years old. So, I mean, think about when you were 19. I was barely getting my feet wet, you know? Yeah, that's so young, so innocent. Like, this did not have to happen. The justice system definitely failed in this um, situation. And it's like so crazy that it's usually the complete opposite. You got these people with nonviolent crimes serving time and they're over sentence but then you got people like him that only served 15 years and they were like all right go ahead you're free to murder again if you want to and that's exactly what he did and it was all in part i think the first murder he got out a big part of that was the letter the pastor wrote mm -hmm. even the second time he went in the pastor like had wrote some good character letter saying mm -hmm. that he thinks he's changed and all of this so it's really crazy that her dad Okay. Knowing what he did, still introduced his daughter to her to him. And um, what's really crazy to me is they didn't meet in the 90s. They met in 2008, got married in 2010, and he killed them in 2016. Google, Facebook, mm -hmm. MySpace. How many of y'all, now if you're watching this, we probably got some things in common. Right. Because how many of y'all have scrolled on Facebook, <laughs> say you interested in somebody or you trying to be nosy on somebody's page and then you end up on a great auntie's page? Because <laughs> you didn't read right too on. many times. Right <laughs> so this is like recent. This was in like the last past decade where we have our phones on us all the time. Google's right there, mm -hmm. public records. Females are good at finding a nigga's whole life. We detectives. Mm -hmm. Period. If I don't know, my friend's going to find out in 2.5 seconds. Like, oh, girl, here it is. Here's the public record. Here's the marriage license. Mm -hmm. Here's the ex-baby mama. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so it's crazy that she didn't know. I think I actually seen or read somewhere where she did ask him but he played it down. She was like, so what really happened? Um, and he said that him and the ex-wife were arguing back and forth and self-defense, they were pushing each other and he pushed her a little too hard. She hit her head and died. Now that to me sounded a lot like the movie, He Got Game. Yep, He Got Game. So I don't know, Dude but was she- was watching it. <laughs> just like her dad, I mean, she just wrote it off, I guess. and. Dickmatized, blind, blind to it, just blind and believed it. Mm -hmm. And again, this is 2010, 2012, probably. Yeah, we have the tools at this time to yep. see why somebody really went to prison. I know in our local state, 
Um, I have friends that work in the prison system. <laughs> we can look up Arizona Department of Corrections with somebody's last name. If they got out years ago, you can still look them up and see what they were in for and all the stuff they got in trouble in prison for. Okay. So it's I don't know where they lived. If we think of it, maybe we'll throw the name somewhere along the bottom of top or somewhere. But where are you at where your head is that deep that you don't know why your man went to prison in 2010, 2012? 2016 like do your research do your research and just make sure because they're just there are monsters out there and you know you got to be careful especially if you got babies because they are the innocent ones in the situation i know for myself i don't trust a motherfucker and i'm gonna go ahead and say that i know my my my, my mouth my potty mouth but i don't trust a motherfucker so yeah <laughs> and i'm like was she holding on to the fact that they went to church like he was a church guy and then be the worst ones <laughs> right you know, and everybody's so quick, like yeah. church is the best place mm -hmm. to find somebody be the worst ones yeah so that's our story yeah so let us know what you think we will link a couple of the stories so that you can go in read about it there's um if you're lazy and you just want to watch it you can definitely um we'll link all that stuff and you can yeah there's a show called evil lives here where we'll link it it shows the wife or the ex-wife now and she kind of talks about the story but that is our crime and cocktail you guys thanks for tuning in thanks for rocking with the melanin again cheers see you soon